Good evening to you. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, let's see if I can see the chat here. All messages. Oh, there we go. Good evening, Alicia and Dave. Hello, Patty. You did. You made it early there. Um, the three of you. Oh, glad you guys are all doing well, it looks like. So good. You've made it through everything. <laughs> hey, Dave, how much snow did you end up getting? You said it was 18 inches and still going. I'm like, oh my goodness. Um, that was a big snowstorm. I think that was your nor ether, nor ether, your ether coming from the nor. <laughs> Let me get a drink. 22 inches. Oh my goodness. Hey, Alicia, good to see you too. Yes, your nor nor'easter. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that, that pulled in. <laughs> Pulled it a whole bunch. Christy, hello. How are you? Oh my goodness. We have got, as you can tell, sunshine. Woohoo! Lots and lots of sunshine. It's so nice to have the light out right now when you guys are here because it feels just so much more natural. I don't feel like I'm in a cave, you know, in a dungeon when it's so dark. And so Kiri, hello. Good morning. It snowed at your place. I was wondering how you guys were doing because you had been so warm and then that front came through that gave us a very, very messy snowstorm. And, um, and it just, I just saw all that line all through the United States. And it was like, oh, and I was checking the temperatures and it was down into the 30s and 40s. <laughs> and so I'm like, I wonder how it is down there for you guys. But <laughs> Hey, Matt and Sarah. Hello. Um, still too cold as far as you're concerned. I know it needs to be back up to 70 before you feel good, right? Well, today, um, I think we hit about 36, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe not quite, but it was above freezing and sunny all day. So we are melting. We are melting. I would say we probably... I don't know, we could have lost four or five inches of snow today alone. It's uh, it's really melting out there now. So, um, and the whole week, I mean, they, they had said, oh, it's 30 degrees right now. Um, they had said that the whole week was supposed to, we were supposed to have three or four more days of snow and there's nothing now, <laughs> just sunny and partly cloudy and different things. So, um, but there's only two days that it doesn't even get above freezing during the day. Otherwise, we have we have some good days that are coming up. Um, at least six, even in the 30s overnight. When okay, the, the storm for us came through on Thursday and it was like a slush storm. I mean, and it was 50 mile an hour winds, it was so nasty out there. Um, I managed to get out to go get the mail, which is across the street. I have to go for my mailbox and it was, it was so nasty. Um, but, and so I'm like, I'm not going to get out and shovel. And then the plows came by in the middle of all of that. It was still snowing heavy and through all of this slush and chunks all the way, through, all over my driveway and sidewalks everywhere, all the way up to the house. And I'm like, I am not going out in that weather and taking care of that. Well, then the temperatures dropped quickly and it all froze solid. <laughs> so, so I had a few days of just <clears throat> covered with ice chunks everywhere and just, uh, you know, frozen slush. So it was, um, it was crazy. It was just nuts. And I had, um, I finally went out Saturday evening um, or late afternoon. And so it was, <laughs> it was, it was kind of four wheeling it through the ice and stuff like that. But um, it's now every day it has melted a little bit. And so at least my, the apron of my driveway is all clear. And um, so that that's good. That's good. But it was, it's just been crazy. Oh, the temperatures dropped to, um, Thursday night and Friday night, I think it was Thursday and Friday night, it was minus 22 wind chill. 
So 22 below zero Fahrenheit wind chill. You had to drive an hour and a half in that? <gasps> yes, it was so bad. What were you doing out in that? Oh, my goodness. Um, yeah, we wouldn't be diving in that stuff. I mean, that's you got to do that in the lakes. <laughs> cut, the, cut a chunk of ice out in the lake and then do your polar plunge. But, yeah. Um, for you, Alicia, most of your snow is melted. Well, good for you. I know there are birds out there in my in my on my sidewalk right now where I've got a lake and they were just having a good old time. So for Patty, it was lovely all weekend. Then today it got cold and rainy again. It's supposed to be my other latest snow, possibly. Hmm. Um, I don't think I have any ice skates. I used to ice skate, but um I've had to be a little more cautious uh, in the last few years since I tore my meniscus. And, um, you know, it's like, okay, my body's telling me that I need to be a little more cautious, need, you know, getting a little older, getting, things aren't working quite as well as they used to. So I've had to give up snow skiing and um, skating and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Hi, Jane. I am in West Central Minnesota. Um, <laughs> that is, that is true, Patty. It was not fit. Oh my goodness. It was, it was, um, a messy storm. It was a nasty, messy one. And it didn't snow all that much. I think maybe three or four inches, but it was, it was such a mess. Oh my goodness. And the after, the after effects of it have just been crazy. So. You have a duck and three geese on nest for Mo's world. Oh, oh, you had to go to the cabin for, oh, that was, um, he probably wasn't ready to be stranded out there, I imagine. <laughs> oh, so Jane, um, where are you from, Jane? You have a Minnesota name, so I'm just wondering. Oh, yeah, you're in southern Minnesota. There you go. You would be closer to Matt and Sarah than you are to me. So um, <laughs> anyway, welcome, welcome, welcome. So yeah, I mean, it's been wonderful to have the, the sunshine and um, the early evenings and stuff, I know. But I thought, okay, somebody clue me in. I thought we were going to not have any more time changes. Apparently, that didn't go through. Um, you know, I don't know. <laughs> if somebody knows, that would be great. That would be great. So, hey, Kathy, how are you doing? Mid 40s, sunny, but 30 miles. Yeah. It has been windy all after, all weekend. Um, my brother was going to fly out to, he's got a small plane, so he was going to fly out to visit yesterday, and winds were just too much. Even at... You know, they calmed down to about 17 miles an hour, but there's still too many crosswinds for the uh, small airports and stuff. It was too risky. Um, you're warm, almost 50. Oh, my goodness. That storm just blew in and then spring came, right? Um, so tomorrow we're supposed to be up to 32. Wednesday, 29, Thursday, 27. So we're still getting in the um, in the teens at night. Yeah, still in the teens at night. And this is really, these are, I think, a little cooler temperatures for this time of March. Usually we're getting up closer to the 40s. But anyway. Um, hey, Grammy Karen. Hello. How are you? Oh, Kiri, I'm so sorry. So you had two feet of snow plus fast warm up at the beginning. Of, ah, yes, Dave, yes. So um, <laughs> I don't. I guess you are, Alicia. You used to have a couple others that came in, but um, you know, I I know some others, but. Um, I might as well give you my garden tip while we're talking about snow and different things like that. And um, <clears throat> for those of us in the north, which there are quite a few of us here doing that, um, as the snow is melting, 
Um, see if you could, you know, because we've got these huge snow banks and different things. And then other areas are going to be, have very little snow on them. And the grass is going to be um, exposed earlier than other areas and flower beds or, or vegetable beds, or I should say more herb beds, any of your perennials are going to be exposed a lot earlier than others. And so sometimes you don't want them to be so, um, so exposed in the way like, um, my, the South side of my house, I have the bed along there and I have a lot of tulips in there. And so in this warmer weather, because they get the, the Southern sun, that Southern exposure, and, um, it beats off the house and kind of reflects down and different things. And the snow melts really quickly there. The soil heats up faster there. So, the, um, the tulips start popping up like crazy as soon as that, that snow covers off of there. Well, then we still end up, I mean, we could get down to zero or even below yet in April. We could have a lot more snow, have a lot more freezes coming. Um, Cause right now it was March 20th. I think May 20th is my last freeze date here. So I still have two months yet. And that, that's, you know, it's like, Really? Winter's not over yet. <laughs> so I guess I'll have two more months, at least of freezing temperatures. Um, but there have been so many springs where my tulips end up just getting, they come up, they're about eight or 10 inches up. They're starting to create, you know, blood, buds, <laughs> blossoms, and, you know, or at least they're budding out. And then we have a really hard freeze. They can take a light freeze, but a really hard freeze and it just kills them off. And then they just, they're either stunted and they don't bloom or they're, you know, so anyway, um, what I try to do is take some of the snow in the areas where I've got snow banks and everything, and then move it over on top of those. So, um, I don't wait until there's like no snow on it. I, I will start it out with, you know, there's a few inches left on there. I'll just keep piling it on and, um, for as long as I can, as long as I've got snow out there in the snow banks and on the ground, just keep covering it. And you can do that with your herb beds too. Um, do, and it's really kind of a protection that you can give to it too, so that it doesn't develop and sprout out faster than what you want it to. Um, you know, you just to help it along and it'll add more moisture to that area. It'll help it out and it, then it can um, come up and do its thing, grow at the right time when it needs to. It's so I'm missing a lot of things. You guys are chatty tonight. Um, <laughs> yes, Alicia, probably represent your country. Yes. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Christy. I saw someone post how their husband took his shirts and put them on the shrubs to protect them from freezing. You know, whatever works. Yeah, you try to do that. Um, cloth does not work as well as plastic, really, because plastic will, will hold in the heat of the ground a lot more, protect it from um, the freezing and everything. Uh, the cold air can get through, um, you know, because if seen people use quilts and blankets and all kinds of things to throw it out there. Um, you know, but, but, um, they, they're fibrous and they have, um, you know, the air can get through them and different things it's better than nothing, obviously. But, um, you know, so if you can have some tarps or plastic ready and on hand, actually, um, a clear plastic is even better because, if you get, um, it'll heat up faster with the uh, sunlight and stuff like that during the day. Um, tulips are so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, I love tulips. And I love them because they they pop up in their color right away. A lot of times they're up and blooming for Easter. You know, if Easter's a little later in April or something. And after a whole winter of white and brown and gray and black and everything. It's like, oh, oh, flashes of color and living things, you know, green and pink and yellow. And it's just so beautiful. Um, yes, yeah, snow is a great insulator. Absolutely. 
Beautiful photo of a Texas blue bonnet covered in snow and ice. Oh, you know, um, I watch the Smiths, Granger Smith and his family, and they have a whole field almost in, in their whole area of uh, blue bonnets. And they're always so excited when they come up. And so they show them on their video on their videos and everything, but I never get to see exactly what they look like. So I'm going to have to go online and research to see. It's like, what does a blue bonnet really, really look like? So because I know that they're beautiful. And I don't know, do they smell really good too? Uh, Christy, probably poor man's fertilizer. I like that. Hi, Corey Kins. How are you? You move snow to your trees. That's a great idea to put a little ash on the snow over the raised bed and it melted all the snow already. Well, there you go. That will do it. Most definitely. I remember one, I don't know if any of you followed, um, Ariel at Phi Nith. Um, I've talked about her before, but she's out in Wyoming and, um, she did an experiment one year of just like throwing ashes on, um, different areas of her snow. It was a very snowy year. I think her, her base <laughs> was like eight or nine feet or something like that. And so, um, you know, she would just throw ashes out on it and everything to see, see if that one would melt faster than the other and vice versa or whatever. So, um, anyway, one caveat regarding plastic, um, that is so true. Absolutely. Um, thank you, Patty, for, um, for saying that, but yes, it can. Um, so yeah, actually a couple layers on there really helps. And I think it depends on to how cold it gets. Tulips were your mom's favorite. Oh, hey, busy little house. Hello. On the big hill. Yeah. I don't know anybody. I'm going to have to check to see if anybody around here has a wood stove and does ashes. I'm not sure. Hmm. I know somebody down the street burns corn cobs. Um, they have a special fireplace like that that burns that's specific for burning corn cobs. So um, I don't know what the difference is or anything, but um, oh, that's good to know, Carrie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> then I won't go out in the blue bonnet fields. I just, just, you know, if I go to Texas, you won't see me there then. Um, Ash will definitely help you use sand that you can get from town in the darkness of the sand. 100% melts of snow. Very good. Oh, yeah. On your driveway, you you definitely need that, um, that better. That's for sure. Um yeah, my driveway is clearing up pretty good. Um, again, my sidewalk in front of the house is just a mess. <laughs> I showed you guys my snow last week. So um, I'm just trying to see. Hmm. Yeah, the garden area has probably gone down maybe four or five inches, I guess. Something like that. So, so anyway, that was my prep tip is to... Um, you know, move the snow around to areas that, that might need it. And, um, you know, like Matt and Sarah, if you have beds, like even your strawberry beds, if those are all free and clear and you start getting some nice warm temperatures and they're starting to add some greenery and different things, it's like, I want to throw some extra snow on them so that they don't come up quite so early and everything. So, um, the Wooden Shoe Tulip Festival is just starting here this week. Then the iris and peonies and lilac is oh, all those spring flowers. So beautiful. So beautiful. It, it's fun, isn't it? It's just to have everything. I think that's part of why we get re-inspired to garden every spring is because oh, we want that fresh life coming up, right? Um you know, and just seeing things germinate and grow and different things. So Dave, how are your asparagus shoots doing? I'd like to know. 
Uh, you have compost bins in a sunny early melting spot. Oh, there you go. That's good. Get them heating up. Yep. That's a good one. Let me see what I've got here. Okay. Um, so that was my garden tip. So one of the things I want, I mean, I have thrown things out over the last four years in um, prep tips of just like, you know, just quick stocking up things here and trying to get, get set. And, you know, and there's, um, of course, so much out there right now about, you know, you've got to stock up, you've got to get this stored up and everything. And so I wanted to, um, okay, get some baby ones growing. Oh, that's good. Um, oh, thanks, Kiri. Oh, let me quick look at this then while I'm here. There's a blue bonnet. Oh, wow. Right in the snow and everything. That's beautiful. So now do they have a fragrance too? And do they smell like something like grapes or something like that or, or violets or, um, you know, or a rose or peony or something like that. There's a hops festival, Filbert festival. I think anybody's favorite, they can create a festival out of it. Right. Um, so anyway, we've been, I, we've briefly talked about, you know, the different things and what I've done and, and all that kind of stuff to, to store it up. And yes, it's taken me years to get to the point where I'm at. Uh, I've been um, doing it for probably five or six years of building up m what I have, you know, from, from my food to supplies and different things like that. So it, um, it, it takes time. Um, I mean, there's some people, yeah, if they want to, you know, and I never advocate this at all to go out and take your credit card and go out and buy $5,000 worth of stuff. That, so you've got a year's supply of everything. You know, I don't advocate that because then it's like, how are you going to pay that off? Right. You're still going to want to keep it, um, a year's worth of whatever it is, you know, that you, all your supplies, but you're still going to have to buy the same of your, your usual amount every month to resupply that so that you continually have that long extended supply. So um, what do we have? Um, you can Google the smell of blue bonnets. Oh, funny. Prep without debt is best. Absolutely, absolutely. Very well said, Patty. Um, so, you know, how to how to do that. And it's like, everybody's starting to freak out and you see channels that are just like, you know, panicking and just fear porn thumbnails and just all kinds of stuff. And I don't want you guys to be panicking, but you know, and I've, I've put this out as prep tips. So I just thought, well, maybe it's time to just have a full conversation about this. And I want to see what you guys are doing about it. Um, you know, Matt and Sarah, you've done a great job at, um, cataloging on video what you've been doing and um you know the different things that you do about going to um you know getting um going to Aldi and and different things and and keeping within a very very small budget for the food for your family you know family of six and everything you're welcome um I'll look at that in a little bit Kiri so thank you for sending that you started sun chokes this past fall can't wait to yeah nice lots of food per year you know that's a that's a really key thing too is like what can you grow that's going to produce a lot of food in the space that you have um rather than a great big bushy plant that's going to just put out a few things you know and it's like um again go through the things that you you know make a list of the foods that you like and eat make a list of the supplies that you normally use the things that you need toothpaste toothbrush um shampoo you know um bar soap um 
dental floss, chapstick, you know, just the things that, you know, toilet paper, paper towels, Kleenex, just all of these things that you need to have as a, you know, whatever your uses are. I mean, if you don't use Kleenex and you just blow it anywhere, that's your business. <laughs> Thing. Just don't do it around me because you will hear about it. Anyway, um, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> um, so anyway, yes, you need to, um, you know, know what your deeds are, not your wants. Just say, oh, I'd really like to have, you know, it's like I sew and I really want to have another, you know, five bolts of cloth just laying around just in case or whatever. You know, it's. <laughs> You caught that one, Matt. <laughs> um, but anyway, so so find out what your actual needs are and everything and, and what you can do. Um, you got some seeds. Great. Wonderful. Yes, Patty, to get your garden built and put in. Absolutely. Just think your ancestors prepared when or how they could. It meant survival and using what you were blessed with. It's on in recent times. Eyebrows are raised if you do that. I know. Exactly. Um, oh, good for you. Good for you, busy little house. Yay. <laughs> That's the other thing, Patty, too, is it? what do you have room for? You know, and it's like, obviously, there are some things that are going to take up a lot of space. You know, like... Um, I was just thinking about, let's say if you use, you know, liquid um, jugs of laundry soap and you might go through a gallon jug in a month, where are you going to store 12 jugs in, in their house? You know, and that's just one item. So you're going to have to look at the space you have, your needs, what you can do, what you can resupply and that type of thing. Oh, hey, Caitlin. Oh, that's good. Yes, but isn't that crazy? Oh, it's everything. Um, so I don't know if you can see this little cabinet right here. It just has DVDs in there. And it's only like five inches deep or something. Um, and it's about 11 inches wide. So about a five by 11. And then I can re I can adjust the shelves up and down to what they do. I've got an extra one of those, a couple of them um, that I have in another room with just things that I've um, gotten some containers that I will throw like all of my dental floss in there. And, and they don't have to be big because dental floss doesn't take up that much room. So it's a smaller container. Um, I've got some, a lot of them have lids on them. So I have this clear and it's a clear box with a lid and you can go to the dollar store and find them. You can go on Amazon, find them, um, you know, whatever, however you want to do it. Um, if you, if you have containers that you can't see into, make sure you label them really well, that type of thing. But um, just start getting what you can. If you're going to the store again and you need to get dental floss, pick up two. If you can pick up a third one, that's fine. If you can use the store brand instead of the um, the main brand of, of whatever it is, um, you know, and save a third of the price, you know, that's or more, um, you know, do that. You know, I can get dental floss for like 89 cents for a case instead of a dollar and a half or two dollars for the name brand. So, um, you know, just try to try to look at those different things that you need and um, and then put them in these things. And then I've got them stored on the shelf. So I've got like all of my um, my personal bathroom supply type of things in, in one area. So I've got a container for all my toothpaste. I've got another one for, for this. And I take the toothpaste out of the boxes and then I can put more into this plastic container that it'll fit more tubes of toothpaste than the other one. So, um, or then, then just stacking the, the boxes of them, you know? So anyway, like um, I just pulled another tube out last week, I think. And so it was like, okay, I have room for two more in there. So I got another box of, of two tubes and I haven't purchased toothpaste for, 
six months, maybe at least. So, um, so now I've got, I've got enough in there. I probably have enough to last me almost two years, <laughs> but you know, it's like, sometimes you just like, Oh, and that was when I kind of cleaned through things and rearranged and different stuff to just go, okay, I've got toothpaste here and here and here. And so I was cleaning out and I was like, hmm, I've got a lot more than I thought I did. So that's where if you have one area where you can keep all those in and keep them in containers, you can see what you have and different things. Yes, buying bulk is terrific if you can. Um, especially look for things that are on sale. Um, well, we'll go for bulk. Um, if you have, let's say you use chapstick. Instead of buying one or two tubes at a time, see if there's a pack of five or something that you can that, that's a lot cheaper and you buy that pack of five and you can put that away and it's going to last you a lot longer. Um, look for sales on things. Um, you know, definitely plan ahead. Keep keep a list of everything. One of the things that I do. Um, let me see if I'll pull it up here. groceries. Okay. Um, I've got these notes on my phone. And so I keep a, a notes list. Oh, I don't know if you can see it here. That's got all of my groceries on here that I like to buy. So I will have, okay, there's dairy, there's meats, there's household, all that kind of stuff. And so that as I'm going through the week, this is my shopping list too. Um, I used to keep a written one on the fridge and everything, but then if I was out and about, I'd forget about it, you know, that kind of thing. So, oh, Christy, that's awesome. Sometimes buy the three packs. Yeah. Um, didn't have an income for a while, so you had to rely on your preps. See, it is not just for certain times or something like that, but it's like if you're out of work for a while, your income is cut, your preps are there, and, then, and it's great. Um, so, you know, I've got like a whole Walmart list. I have a Menards list. And so it's like these things are getting checked off. Or I keep um, the things that I need. I, whoops. There we go. The things that I need done. There we go. I put a check mark in front of them as I'm going through the store. Because I've got Cub Foods, I've got Target, I've got Fleet Farm, Dollar Store. Um, you know, and I've even added now my online stores where things I get from, you know, like uh, vitamins and supplements and different things like that. Um, so it's like, okay, I the next time I place an order, I'm going to need to get these and these and these and, um, you know, and stuff like that. We watched a video today, a guy bought storage lockers. He sort of rents to store bathroom supply plus junk, but this person lost it all. Oh my goodness. Wow. Um, by the big tubes, use a smaller amount and goes further. Yep. Yep. Exactly. You don't need a you don't need a full toothbrush full of toothpaste when you're when you're doing that. So so anyway, I've got the different stores on here where I get my things, and that's where shopping around, you know, Aldi, all that kind of stuff, shopping them around, you know what you need and where you need to go for your um, for your shopping and everything. So when I run up to um, the town that I usually shop at, it's like, okay, um, I've got, you know, an hour and a half that I can stop here and here and here, and that that's on my list. So I can do that. And that's, um, that helps. Yeah. A lot of chicken canned. I was through a lot more. Yeah. It does say you only need a piece. Yep. You only need a pea size. Yep. And especially if you brush morning and night, um, or even more times than that, but if you brush more than once a day, you, you don't need that much. Um, Sam, Samsung Notes doesn't that you know. Of. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is the iPhone Notes. So um, it, I've been using this now for two years, maybe. Year and a half, two years, I think. 
and it's great. I just I love it. So I just pull it out when it's in the store. It's in my cart, and I'm just looking through. And I actually have this the main store that I shop at. I actually have it laid out into like how I go into the store and make my way around um, so that I'm not flipping back and forth on the list. So what is on the list first is where I would see things first, you know, it'd be like um, health, the health and beauty areas or something like that. And then it goes to hardware and, you know, uh, home goods and ends up um, the last thing would be the produce. So, so I'm going through things. So it's like, okay, all I need to do. So, so if I need like, um, you know, some greeting cards or if I need super glue or if I need, you know, just different things like that, that's all in there. So um, that's okay. Hi, Bex. Um, is something for drinking when your blood pressure drops? Okay. Well, that's a good thing to have, Caitlin. It doesn't break when you drop it. <laughs> that, that is a problem, Corey. Yes, yes, yes. I hear you. Um, you know, and I can easily go back to the paper, but for now, this is it's just, just been working really, really well for me. So when I... Um, if I notice that I'm getting low on something, I will actually add to my list at the end of it, you know, let's say toothpaste. It's like, I'll put like dash two or three or something that it's like, okay, I know that I need more than just one to resupply what I have and, and everything. So um, I actually, in my show notes below, I put a name of a few channels. There's a ton of channels out there. That you just research it that can help you figure out how to shop frugally, how to budget, how to do all that stuff. I don't want to get into all of those kind of things right now, but um, Matt and Sarah is one of them. Uh, Mary's Nest Channel, Thrifty Chic House, uh, Little Mountain Ranch. And they, they go from like bulk shopping to canning to, you know, preserving and to making so much yourself. That's a lot cheaper than buying things. So there's a lot of lot of things that you can figure out and um yeah man sarah you've done this um shopping challenge this year and it's like incredible hey jmb how are you um yeah and it's like if you can go to the dollar store and pick up i mean you can even get your toothpaste there if you want but do check your prices know where you're gonna go and that's why i have this list of the different stores so it's like okay i know where they are and that helps me plan my time to plan where i'm going to go different things so um, another thing that helps too is um if you do any like let's say you get um, certain things online you might get supplements um you know other household things or something like that that you like to always buy online not necessarily amazon but they're just one of many companies that do this and a lot of them will have subscriptions that you can do in the way of, okay, I'm going to be going, I'm going to need this thing every month and I'm going to order this. And, um, if you, if you do a subscription, you get a minimum 5% discount on it. Um, if you, you know, if you get, say three items, you might get 10% discount. If you have five, five items minimum, you might get a 15% discount on all of your items. So thinking about doing that, and that's where your research comes in and trying to save that money. So if you, um, <laughs> I'm busy little house, right? Um, me the dollar 20, yeah, right, Patty. It's not a dollar store anymore, but um, so, you know, if you're, if these are things that you're getting anyway, um, I'm just trying to think, uh, what did I have? So I don't, I don't know, whatever you would, you would normally get and that you would need that you um, can't find. You can easily get more for your, for your money on something like that. Um, let's say, that's something you want to do, um, an online subscription to have it delivered. Um, and 
that you want to build up your pantry that way or build up your your supplies. And it could be even toilet paper or whatever it is that you're getting delivered. Um, think about, okay, if I got two instead of one at that point and I could still get 15% off of each one, Yes, you're saving money and you're gradually building your things. Like I said, it took me five or six years to build to the point where, um, you know, I feel pretty comfortable about the things that that I need that I can fall back on. And um, there, there are more consumable things, of course, that you go through that don't keep, but um, it's, uh, you could empty a dollar. Hey, Rams family, how are you? I thought the 445 store. <laughs> Oh, Rems, it is. Thank you so much. I didn't remember seeing your name before, but I'm so glad that you could be here. Um, you did go buy 10 pounds of flour last week when it was on sale. <sighs> nice. Okay. And then that's the other thing. Find the sales. Um, if you need to get, um, you know, subscribe to a newspaper or a um you know, emails or online things or whatever, try to find out where the sales are. Um, I believe Aldi has a weekly sale sheet and everything so that if you know, it's like, okay, guess what? Um, potatoes are going to be on sale this week, half price. What does that mean to you for your family? Can you be like, okay, I'm going to buy three sacks of potatoes. We're going to, I know they all won't keep right away, but I'm going to can up two of them, you know, or something like that to have, to be able to store some things away, to be able to have those for the future. And like I said, just pick one thing at a time. If that's, that's all you can do. Um, but if, if you can find the sales and, you know, you can stay within your budget to be able to, Add to that a little bit and don't do it so that it stresses you out. Oh my goodness, not at all. But the more that you're able to um, to put away and to build your pantry a little bit, and like I said, shore it up, which means to strengthen it, to, um, he just, that expression comes from if anybody lives on a lake shore or um, ocean beach or anything like that, the the water can end up, um, you know, the waves and the weather and the ice or whatever it is can end up deteriorating the shoreline. And so you need to bring in rocks, boulders or other sand or do some work to um, to build it up and strengthen it. And that's what it means is to build it up and strengthen your your home, your household, or what you have here. And so um, you would always buy enough to eat right away and enough to can. There you go. Um, a loaf of white bread here is two and four dollars the flower oil. Yes, absolutely. Um, no, that's just really great. Um, some other things are just, just on the side note to how to stretch your dollars at the grocery store. Try to increase the time between going to a, the, the store in between visits um, and see if you can just stretch things out a little bit more. Again, plan ahead, have a list, have a plan of what you need, of what's going to be able to, what you can afford to get this week in the budget. Um, on my list on my phone, even though I have a lot of things checked, I don't get everything every time. Um, I will, you know, if there's something that's like, of course, if it's not at the store, I can't get it. So it's like it stays on the list. But there are other things that'll be like, you know what? I don't need that quite yet. Like, let's say printer ink. You know, that's doggone expensive. That can blow your budget right away. I had to get some last week or the week before, you know, 85 bucks. <laughs> it's like for printer ink. It just, it astounds me. I think I paid $45 for my printer. And it's like now twice a year I've got to buy, you know, the ink for it. It's just, yeah. Um, stretching is good because you might use less common stuff in your pantry too. So true, Dave. So true. So you're like um, getting to some of the older stuff that you've got stored up. Yep. 
you can't eat wheat, but you shop for your church's secretary. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so Patty, absolutely. Um, oh, thank you, Corey. I appreciate that very much. You're welcome. Um, you don't have room in this camper to make bread. Maybe a bread machine would be easier. Um, I don't know. Bread machines are pretty big, too. They can take up a lot of room. So, so anyway, plan ahead. Um, buy produce on sale and in season. So um, let's say strawberries are out of season, you know, November, December or something, even though like, oh, it'd be so beautiful to have that for the holidays and stuff. It's like they're doggone expensive. It's like buy them in the summer when they're cheap, you know, and um, and then maybe freeze them, you know, freeze them or can them up or something like that. And you can have them um, for other things. We do it, but they're, they're again, buy in bulk, freeze it, can it, do something with it in the way of food. Um, schedule prep work. I'm just going through the list of one of the, and I, I put a couple, um, a couple links below too, um, of different shopping tips from, uh, one is from everything unscripted, a frugal Friday shopping tip. And another one was on a business insider on how to save money on groceries. So there, there are a couple different things there that can maybe help you um, when it comes to like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to afford it? So there's a lot of really good tips in there. Um, yes, buy in bulk when possible. Um, oh, make the meat the accent, not the main feature. So in other words, it's like instead of having a full steak or something, <laughs> not that I ever buy a steak because it's so dang expensive, but it's like, okay, so you've got a steak. Instead of taking the full steak, you know, you've got eight ounces in front of you or something, um, it could easily have three or four ounces that are sliced up and sauteed up with a bunch of vegetables and different things like that and kind of a stir fry type of thing. So you've got, you know, you're still getting your steak, but again, making it stretch. And then wonder if, so um, another thing is to make soup. Now in the summer, yeah, I don't feel like eating soup in the summer, but in the winter, lots of soup. That'll help make everything stretch more. Um, oops, right over here. My... Thingies are not working right here. <laughs> okay, there we go. Um, okay, so look for sales. Um, just get one or two needs at a time if you could do that, but try to get four to six months worth of that need. Like we said, toothpaste. You know, if you go through one tube a month, see if you can pick up four or six tubes and then just and that would be the only thing that week. And it's like, okay, you know, and again, start with trying to get a, a full three months supply of everything. And then it's like, okay, I've got that. And then try to work to six month um, if you can, you know, and again, it depends on your storage space, depends on your budget and everything. But um, okay, Kathy, thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate that. Save the bones and scraps, meats and vegetables for soup. Excellent. Yep. Yeah, then, then the more things you can make from scratch, uh, the the more you're going to save, all that kind of stuff. So um, good to keep lists of inventory too. Yes, absolutely. Yep. It's like, oh, I know that there's two more jars of peanut butter, in, you know, down in, in the basement in the storage. And you go down and it's like, no, it's not there. <laughs> You're in the middle of something that needs peanut butter, whether it's for the kids or a recipe or something like that. And it's like, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's just not great. So, um, okay. So look for things that are on, like I was saying, look for sales right now. Um, I don't know if they are right today, but when I was, I was at the store, when was I there? It was before the storm. I think so. It's like last Tuesday or something. Um, they had limes on sale. I mean, 
bunches and bunches. I mean, just like piles and piles of limes. Now, you know, limes aren't going to last very long. And they were on sale. Well, I don't know how much of a sale it was. I think they were 89 cents each, which seems to be really expensive to me. But um, <clears throat> anyway, it's the season for limes to be coming in. And so, again, that's what we're talking about, buying in season. So it's like they're limes. It's like, oh, my gosh. So if you use limes for things, um, you know, <sighs> Not necessarily look for lime juice, but if you're looking for limes themselves, um, think about getting, you know, a bunch of them and then slicing them up, dehydrating them and storing them away. So then you've got limes for when, you know, if they're in season and cheap, you've got them now for the times when you need it and they're not cheap and they're not in season and, um, you know, the shelves are clearing out, you're not going to be able to find them, that type of thing. So, um, yeah, it's like, I'm like, oh man, <laughs> that's what it's like, for freeze dryers, like get, get that going, right? Um, use coupons. You know, we think that that's like such a, an old thing. Now there's, um, there's a lot of apps and online companies and um, just different things, mobile friendly things that have a lot of coupons, a lot of um, things like if you if you buy certain things, you run through your Walmart um, list, you know, and you and you just scan it or something like that, or just you know incorporate it into that. And it, like Fetch, I think is one, and it automatically starts adding up certain things that are that qualify for that and so you can get i think i i got up to like 12 or thirteen thousand points or something but i never all the things that they had available that i could get for free were things that i didn't use like diapers and dog food and different things like that hey glenn how are you doing um candied limes Ooh, there you go Save the peels to use for cleaning vinegar. There you are. Um, friend juiced a bunch of limes and froze it. See, there you go. I was thinking about like, how would you can lime juice? I don't think you can, but freezing it. Yes, duh. Hey, Donna. Hi. Okay, Christy, thanks so much for coming. I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of... Um, a lot of apps and, and online things that, and coupons and different things that you can get um, that you can have right handy for when you're grocery shopping, as well as being able to get your local paper and the flyer, whatever that comes out and cl clipping coupons and, and bringing them, but the, you can save a lot of money. Um, freeze it in ice cube trays, stores. Yep. So true. Very, very good. Um, also, little trick for the coupons. Say, um, you know, you've got two or three people in your family who can, who are purchasers, consumers, that you can go in and buy. And it, there's, um, if you can get multiple coupons, then you can go in separately. And, you know, if there's, let's say, butter is half price or something like that, but there's a limit of two per person. Um, or per purchase or something like that per household, then you can have somebody go in, purchase something, purchase that separately from you, you know? So it's like you keep, yeah, you, there, there's a few ways you can get around that, but yeah, try to, try to look for those things. Um, and again, like butter, put a couple, um, blocks in your, uh, fridge, put some in the freezer, you know, different things. You can can some, you know, different things like that. So if you can find these on sale, um, you know, super cheap. And they're different times of the years too to get it. There's one really, really good tip that um, I think it was, uh, which it was the Everything Unscripted. I think, I think she had this tip that Stores will put their items on sale every four to six weeks. There's a rotation for them. So if you see it on sale and you're going, oh, I need that, but I can't afford it right now. And it's like, oh, I wish I could get that. 
don't worry, in another four to six weeks, it'll be on sale again, okay? They rotate them around so that not everything's on sale at one time, which makes sense. You, you know, you go broke that way as a business. But um, so let's say crackers are on sale this week and then oatmeal's on sale the next week and then this is on sale the next week, you know, whatever. Plan and know that, okay, it was on sale this time and then make a note, say, okay, April 30th, this is going to be on sale again because it was this week, but I couldn't get it. So, so those are some of the things that, um, you know, you can think about and, and kind of plan ahead for when, when those come around. Um, again, do your due diligence on this research, check to see who has the cheapest of the things that you need while you're still getting good quality, you're still getting good healthy things. Um, you don't want to just buy the cheapest rice or the cheapest beans and the different things like that. That's going to make your family unhealthy or you or your family unhealthy. And you want to make sure that you have good stuff. But anyway, um, you know, the food is one aspect of everything and all of your paper goods and your personal goods and items and different things that you need. That's like a whole nother, um, a whole other place in your brain really <laughs> to, to try to figure out and to try to keep track of and build up to a year's supply of everything. And it takes a lot. It takes a lot of planning, takes patience, takes a little bit of building here and there, but you can do it. Um, you know, and to know that, okay, I've, I'm low on this and this, I'm going to go shop in my other room here. <laughs> it's like, you know, you you just, you could do that with your food and your canned goods and stuff, but when you can start doing it for all your personal items and things that you need, and it's like, I don't have to go to the store. I can just go and, you know, and yeah, I've got this, I've got that. I've got extra bottles of vitamin C or vitamin D or whatever it is that you, that you need. And um, I've got enough shampoo for the year. I've got enough of this for the year. And, um, you know, so things like that they they add up quickly and they're doing really really well <clears throat> you the family does a run on the butter oh there you go mm. have to take tips from them right um patty your best friend's sister is a coupon master she has like a walgreens in the base <laughs> 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 right. Um, paper goods are hard to distort due to the volume. Yeah. And again, you know, um, just find, you know, of course you have brands that you, that you prefer and that you like and everything and just figure out different ways and remember to go vertical with your storage if you can. Um, like I have an old baker's rack that I've got my, things of toilet paper stacked in there. And so it takes up all of about, you know, 18 by 25 inches or something on the floor, but it goes vertical. And so I've got, you know, toilet paper stacked up that way. So, um, you know, and it's in a, the spare room and, you know, they're just different things that you can do. Um, isn't it? She's in her apron and has this amazing storage. I've not seen her yet. And goes down shopping instead of store. I know it's it's really great when you can get to that point. So um, remember to make lists to um, do all that stuff. So my prep fit, prep tip for tonight is if there's something you need to stock up on and the store doesn't have it, as we have been talking about, if the store is out and you're like, how am I going to do this? Check with their online store usually it's there. I've done that with Walmart and Target and um, even Costco, um, different things. So their online store might have it, but not the local store that you go into because they might be, um, you know, they might be out in that way. So um, I've, you know, and a lot of times they'll have a minimum for free shipping, but if there are things that you can, again, you, there's several things that you need. Like I think Walmart's minimum is $35. So if there's $35 worth of stuff you can get, you get free shipping into it. And so, um, you know, I can't even do that 
<laughs> driving a half hour to where I am, it's cost me, you know, five bucks to get there. So, um, so anyway, it's, you know, there, there are ways you can get around if the store is out of things. So um, anyway, you guys, thanks for all your input. I hope this gave you some ideas. I hope it gave you some thoughts and um, some things to chew on and, you know, in your brain, <laughs> so to speak. And uh, that you can um, maybe implement and, and things to, that can help you out with stuff. And remember, just to, like I said, I've got those little shelves up here and they stand, I think five feet high about that. And, um, you know, and they're just shallow media shelves, but they hold a lot of things that are just like all the personal supplies and stuff. So, uh, anyway, thanks Patty. Appreciate that very much. So you guys, thank you to all my, um, my blue peeps here. That's all I see going down. You guys are great. I appreciate all of your help and, and all of your input and welcoming everybody. So thanks, man, Sarah. You guys all take care. So, um, oh, Alicia, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You must have just gotten notice. We will keep you in our prayers most definitely. So you guys take care. God bless. Always have hope. This world is not over with yet. <laughs> God is not done with us yet, right? There is hope out there. And um, but do it, do everything that you can, do the best you can. And we'll see you next week. Good night.